All right, so continuing here, we've got our site ready to go. We just talked about doing WordPress updates, pros and cons. Um, in the advanced class, we'll talk about another con uh, that, is, that, that we get into, but that relates to uh, manually editing the code of our site. We don't have to worry about it just yet. But what I want to talk about is um, this other aspect of WordPress that makes it very powerful, which are known as widgets. Uh, so widgets vary, the, the capabilities or the, or the features of your widget varies depending on your theme. So once again, I think I've said that several times, depending on your theme, depending on your theme, depending on your theme. Every theme is a little bit different how it handles a variety of, of aspects. Now we're going to see uh, widgets. So let's do this. Under the um, appearance section, you want to select, so hover over appearance and then select uh, widgets. All right, so what's a widget? Widgets are like mini programs that we use in WordPress to enhance its capabilities. Wait a minute, isn't that what I said what plugins were? Yes, but the difference here is that widgets are usually something visible on the site. So uh, widgets often come from installing a plugin but widgets are actually visible on the screen. For example, the duplicator plugin, your user never sees that. It's in the back end, it's in the dashboard. Many of the things in the Yoast SEO plugin we use, our user never sees. Um, widgets are things that the user can see. For example, over on my personal blog site, I wanted a way to show icons of all of the social media that I'm on. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, Google+, Instagram, Flickr, YouTube, Vimeo, DeviantArt, Pinterest, Tumblr, etc., etc. So I wanted to have these icons show up on, on my home page. There's a plugin for that, a widget that we activate and we say, on this part of my screen, show this show the social media icons, or show uh, a slideshow, or show uh, a chat feature. So under the widgets screen, depending on your theme, then you have... This widget screen is divided into two areas. Your available widgets and where can you put them. So depending on your theme, mine says primary sidebar footer widget area, content sidebar. And depending on the theme, they'll explain the main sidebar that appears on the left. If you open up content sidebar, additional sidebar that appears on the right. Footer widget area appears in the footer section of the site. <coughs> so you're going to get these different sections, more or less of them, depending on your theme. Some themes might have five widget areas, and some themes might have one, and I've seen some that have zero. Um, and then, depending on the theme as well, it'll try to explain to you where it goes. Oftentimes, unfortunately, it doesn't, so you kind of have to figure it out. But I'm going to open uh, the screen here. This is what our site looks like, and this is what it's talking about, primary sidebar. Main sidebar that appears on the left. Here is on the left. So uh, when I go to view site, this is what I see on the left side. A search box, something that says recent posts, <coughs> recent comments, categories. <coughs> and that's what I'm seeing here. Search, recent posts, recent comments, etc. So whatever I want to show up in my sidebars, I edit them under widgets. Let's say I want categories above search. Click and drag. You don't have to click anywhere to save. It automatically does it. Did you see a little spinning circle for a moment? Watch this. I'm going to drag up here. See that right there? That little thing, as long as it's spinning, it's saving. And when it's done spinning, it's done saving. So try this. Rearrange this primary sidebar however you want. Just move a few things around and then go back to visit site 
and see how it changed the order of your widgets in the primary sidebar. So when you rearrange those, notice now I've got search right here. So we've been working with the primary sidebar. Well, I'm curious to see what's the content sidebar. So try this. <coughs> Just uh, grab um, categories. We've got a couple categories. Drag category and put it into a content sidebar. And then visit site. Let's drag from here to there. And then go to visit site. What does categories mean? Remember when we were creating uh, blog posts and we had uh, the pie of the month and we, we had, um, you know, um, different recipes, so they were categorized that way. Pie recipes, cookie recipes, so it's that organization. So notice when you put something in the content sidebar, it shows up here. I'm going to put archive in there. I'm just playing around with this. What does it look like? Notice when you use that area of the theme, that's where it appears. I'm going to go over to the history page, and it stays there. Blog page stays there. Contact. Are you in the site now, not in the dashboard? That's right. You want to see your results under visit site. <coughs> So uh, that's that's the content sidebar. When you went under history, what did you do there? I just clicked on history to look at it. Oh. And then we've got a uh, footer widget area. Okay, I'm curious to see where where where's where that at. So just drag one of these. Let's say meta. I don't know what meta is, but I'm going to drag it over to footer widget area. Visit site and see the result. I see the footer area is at the foot. What is the 2014 pregnancy? What is the what? 2014, it's down at the bottom right, 2014 camera. Um, what screen are you on? Oh, on the widgets, sorry. That one? See the lower right? Well, this, uh, everyone, I'm going to explain what these are in a moment. But uh, if you, this little description below it kind of tells you what, what it might be. But again, I'm going to go through these in detail in just a moment. Uh, so uh, I'll just move a few things to the footer widget area and then go back to visit site. And then now I've got my search down on the footer. So we've got three areas where we can put these widgets. So imagine, like my example, what if I were to put a little box with all of my social media? I have three spots where I could put it, and perhaps, perhaps under the um, content widget area, content sidebar, would be a good place for it. So uh, this is this is what so as I said it's basically two sides to this screen the available widgets and where do you put them so now we kind of know what the what the right side is about depending on your theme you're going to have different places to put your quick announcement uh, don't forget to turn off your cell phone please I've been hearing it the whole class time someone's getting uh, <coughs> notifications or something uh, I kind of hear it over here maybe everyone check your cell phones please it's annoying. So we've got um, these areas to put our widgets. Let's talk about some of these available widgets. Some of them make sense. Recent posts. So this can show you a preview of your 
of your blog posts. So let's say someone is at some screen like the history page. They'll always have a preview here of your recent posts. And notice you can customize this. If you, if you open the recent posts widget, number of posts to show, I can have 1 or 20 or 99. Um, you can have it show the date. On that, if you do change a particular aspect of a widget, you do need to remember to click Save. But if you rearrange them, there's no Save button for that. So I'm going to click Save, Display Post, and then now it'll tell you the name of the post and when it was posted. Title. I don't know what that is, so I'll write something. <coughs> and if I look at the result... Oh, there we go. The text that I wrote appears above that particular widget. By default, if I didn't write anything, it automatically had the text, Recent Posts. But if I wanted to say something else like, My Thoughts because my blog is a collection of my thoughts instead of recent posts, now it can be called my thoughts and it'll show all of my recent posts. If I no longer want a widget, I've got a delete, a delete button. So many of these are sort of the same way that you can add your own unique title and change a couple of parameters under the archives. So they're pretty, pretty straightforward. If, if I don't explain it, you can always um, go to a particular plugin, make a few changes, visit site, and see what changed. For example, I'm going to change categories. I'm going to turn on both displays drop down and show post counts. And what happens is instead of it showing a list of all of my categories, it'll show me a little drop down box and what's and how many posts are in that category. Now by default, we have a, um, a widget called Meta. And there really aren't any properties at all here to change except the name. And this widget is actually a very powerful one, and one that I always tell beginners to delete. Don't delete it yet, but I'll tell you why. The Meta widget is the widget that adds this. Site admin, logout, entire RSS, etc. Entries. Specifically, there's a login button. Um, and depending on your site, uh, most of you will need to remove your meta widget because you don't want anyone to log into your site except yourself. I can set up my site so that people can create an account and log in and and, and have a profile and all of that. That'll be handled more via another plugin once we get into the shopping cart. So this meta widget, I think it's a security risk because there's a button right away for someone to try to log into your site. So we're gonna remove it and then I'm gonna show you, well, if I don't have a login button, how do I log into my site? Let's do this. Let's, uh, let's go here to the... Um, wherever you've got your meta widget, open it, and then press delete. 
Notice there's no confirmation, so be careful. If that widget was an important one, and you press delete, it's gone. You have to recreate it. No big loss in this case, but I'll show you a better way in a moment. We deleted that widget. So if you go back to visit site, there's no more meta. There's no more way to log in. Did everyone delete that widget? All right, now let's do this. At the top right corner, it should say Howdy Admin. Select Logout. So we're setting this up as if the scenario is there's no login screen and we want to log in. We're still logged in, so make sure to log out. <coughs> and then close the web browser. So we've deleted the widget, we've deleted, we've basically removed the front door. How do we get in? We've logged out so that we know we're locked out. And now I'll talk to you, let's, let's log back in. Let's do this on a different web browser just to, just to show you. We've been using Firefox the whole time. Let's select um, Google Chrome down here. Open up Google Chrome. And when this loads up, the address we're going to go to is http colon slash slash localhost slash wordpress slash wp dash admin. <coughs> this is the direct link to the login to the login uh, screen. So it's a good idea to remove that meta widget because then anyone can try to log in. If we at least remove the front door, we can climb in through the window. This is it how to get there directly to that login screen. This should look familiar. We've, we're going to localhost, as we've been doing for four weeks, slash WordPress, as we've been doing for four weeks. And now we've got the last slash WP dash admin, WP hyphen admin. Press enter. There's the login screen. And to confirm at the bottom, it'll say here, back to Victor's Bakery. Again, let me put the address back up again. So, Victor, if you have multiple sites, Yes, but think about it like this. Let's say you've got um, my site. That's a different site. Or you've got, uh, you know, John, John's <coughs> Bakery. I'm not very creative at the moment. But uh, they all have a WP slash admin, a dash admin at the end. Yes? So you're talking about... Yes. Remember, yours was called WordPress too. Well, I did that. Okay, well, I'll help you in just a moment. So, uh, WordPress slash WP admin, and then also. Um, this address works as well, wp-login.php, whichever one you want to memorize. I usually remember the wp-admin, and now it takes you back to the <coughs> login screen.
All right, so uh, go ahead and log in again. Same as before, happy cat. <coughs> Let's get back into the widgets screen. Appearance widgets. So I showed you that if you, if you uh, open up a particular widget and click delete, it removes it permanently without any confirmation. There's a better way. On the left side, we have available widgets, which can be opened and closed. And then at the bottom, we've got inactive widgets. Drag widgets here to remove them from the sidebar but keep their settings. So I'm going to, because my screen is a lot smaller, I'm going to close my available widgets just by clicking the name. And then now uh, all I need to do is drag from where it exists in the, in the sidebar, drag it into this inactive area. And what happens is I removed it from the sidebar, but it didn't remove the settings. It still has a memory of how many posts, what I wrote, etc. And if I need to put it back, well, just drag it back. Clicking delete is the nuclear option. It goes away. You have to, you have to add it in again and remember, what did I call it? How, what were my settings? No need. If you put it in the inactive widget section, it's there for safekeeping. Yes. Okay, watch this. It depends where you move it. If you drag it, make sure that you're dropping it in a spot with a little dotted line. Um, and then let it go. If you're dragging it elsewhere, it might not be putting it where you think. Make sure you drop it on the dotted lines. Oh, 
Okay, so let's look at some of these available widgets. And these, are, again, are going to vary depending on your theme and other plugins installed. A lot of them are straightforward, so I won't go into a lot of detail, but if you want to show off how many, how much spam Akismet has, has, uh, has killed for you, you can put that for some reason. Archives. If you're a prolific writer and you're posting a lot of content, you could use the archives. Let me show you how that looks back on my blog. It's just going to be a list of what months you have a post and how many posts if you want. For example, down here. Or let's see, where do I have it? Um, oh, let me check it over here. Right here, for example, archives. So again, if I if I write a blog post every month or two a month or five a month, the archives will just show me here uh, how many there are in that particular time period. Calendar. Now this one is confusing to people. This is not going to be a calendar, like like how you might think that it's going to show me a calendar of September and then click next and it'll show me a calendar of. Uh, October or jump over to January of 2015. It's a calendar of your site's posts. So this will only show you a calendar if you've got a post that month, any time that month. So at a glance, I can see January 1st, there was a post on January. In, in January 2014, there was a post on January 1st and January 12th and January 9th. Uh, I didn't post anything on February, so there's no February calendar, but there is on March. So if you want a traditional type of calendar, that's one that we're going to add a little later, a plug-in. Categories, that's self-explanatory. We just looked at meta, custom menu. Let's experiment with this one a bit. Uh, I'm going to drag the custom menu over to primary sidebar. So notice, just click and drag it, custom menu. And what that does is, in conjunction with whatever menus we create in the menu section, we'll be able to put the menu different parts in different parts of the screen. For example, here. Which menu? The main menu. We'll just say the menu. Save. See the result under visit site. And this theme shows it like this. There's home, history, blog, contact, visit, Facebook, which is the same thing as this up here. Home, history, blog, contact, visit, Facebook. But it shows it in a different way, depending on the theme. So the point of this is, let's say we create a bunch of pages or posts, and we don't put them in the main menu. We put them in a holiday menu. October's coming up, Halloween. We could make a bunch of pages related to Halloween and not put them in our main menu, but put them in a new menu called Halloween menu. And then here, show them under Halloween menu. And then they'll display over here the, the, the Halloween menu items or on the right side. So when you go into custom menu, once you have it in the primary <laughs> sidebar, you create various things. Like we created the menu. If I go back and put in Halloween menu, there will be two of those. Exactly. So if I create another <coughs> menu in the menus screen and call it Halloween menu, then there will be an extra drop-down button, drop-down option that'll say Halloween menu. It doesn't erase the first one. Nope. You can have it in as many menus as you want. So here I put it on the sidebar, uh, the main content sidebar, whatever it's called. There it is, instead of here. Pages is a very basic one in that it's just going to be a list of your site's pages. 
no real options. Notice some of these, for example, pages, it, it just asks you where would you like to put it. If you click, actually, if you click any of these, it asks you, you can either drag and drop or select here and it'll add it for you if you click on it on the left side. If you put pages there, then you can actually see its options. Sort by page title, ID, exclude, whatever. Recent comments, recent posts, RSS. Uh, RSS is an old school way of subscribing to a website, especially a blog. Uh, does anyone currently use RSS? Did anyone ever use RSS? No? Okay, I used to. I still kind of do. RSS is just the old school way of subscribing to a site. WordPress has a much newer, uh, a much better way to subscribe to your, to your blog posts. Remember, over on the discussion settings, there's an option somewhere here about letting people subscribe. <coughs> somewhere. The point is that I usually don't deal with RSS widget. Search widget makes sense. Tag cloud. This one's kind of cool. This one is based on, the num on, on your tags. This one shows this one shows what is known as a tag cloud. They're, they're getting a little passe nowadays, but a few years ago they were very hot in that what a tag cloud is is just a graphical representation of all of the tags that you use. On our site it's not very impressive, but uh, let me show you a more impressive version over here. This is another type of tag cloud, in that the tags that were used on a post are displayed in the hierarchy of size. So I did a blog post uh, several months ago, back in January, about the president's NSA speech. Remember when all of that was going on? It's still going on if you're not paying attention. Uh, and so uh, I, I analyzed his speech, and in his speech he said the term intelligence the most often. So that's why it's the biggest term. Uh, so the top 20 or so terms that I, that I analyzed were right here. So some of the ones that were used a little less were Congress. He used the, the term Congress a lot, but not as much as the term government or security or intelligence. So this is a tag cloud. This is a nice fancy looking one. The one in WordPress is a little more basic and it's not very impressive at the moment. We haven't used enough tags. But it'll be the same. Once you use the cookies tag a lot, cookies will be big. And coupon will be second big if it's used second most. So the point of this is that people can see at a glance what are the most used tags in this site. So think about this as your products. When we talk about products, I'm going to sell, let's say, jewelry. I'm going to sell silver jewelry, gold jewelry, platinum jewelry, precious stones jewelry but I sell more gold jewelry, so the gold term will be larger. Maybe the second largest is um, precious stones. So a person can say, okay, click on um, gold, and it'll show me all content that has that tag, gold. And at a glance, I'll see which of them has that tag used most often. Kind of like this. Yes. Oh, for the pages widget, does that just sort of like put the same thing that is in the menu, um, or does that also list like pages that aren't in the menu and everything? Why why would you use it? I guess is you would it would give you a list of all pages. So if you did not add a page to the menu, it would show up here. What you can also do is a little bit of basic organization as in page order, page ID. I don't really have much use for this. I haven't really found a, a reason why to use this, except for exclude. But then you have to look up your page's ID number to exclude it. 
Okay, uh, this one, I used a, a third-party tool. If you'd like to know about it, this one is called, you can go to this website right here, wordle.net, word, L-E, wordle.net, I think it's .net. Yes, wordle.net. This is a cool free website where you can create nice-looking tag clouds, put them on your site, <coughs> or download them. It'll take a bunch of text, and then analyze that text and then make some word clouds based on your text. So Wordle.net. So this is a Wordle. Is a word cloud about uh, some of the terms found in the U.S. Constitution. So this is a graphical representation. Notice what the largest words are. States. President. Well, I guess United States. State. Congress. We're really small here. Hmm. Senators. And the color is ficus. No, the, the color is... Uh, the, the, main, the main thing to look at is the size. The color is just... Um, Visual interest. There, there, are, um, there, are like default colors. there are, and then you can go in and, and choose different styles. <coughs> All right, so Wordle.net is a cool place to make uh, Wordle word clouds. Um, and back to our plugins here. Let me get back to text in a moment. 2014 ephemera. I hadn't actually noticed that one. Use this widget to list your recent aside, quote, video, audio, image gallery, and link posts. That one is if you, when we create, when we create a post, remember on the right side, and we'll probably get back to it in more detail later, when we create a post, we have a different way to display the post. We have standard. And then if it's full of images, perhaps we might want to change the format of the post to images. And if we're focusing on a video post, we might set it as a video. So each one will have a slightly different format or layout or style if we choose. So this widget will show you will show the user a list of posts that follow <coughs> that format so if I've got a lot of video posts I can say show all posts that have been marked as video and I can have more than one of these I can drag another 2014 ephemera and then on that one show all audio so I can have more than one of any of these posts. I can have three search boxes if I want for no purpose, but you can have as many as you want. <coughs> so again, this depends on the theme. If I switch themes to the 2012 theme, that plugin, that, that uh, widget goes away because I'm not using the 2014 theme anymore. I'm using 2012 which might not even have that widget. Okay, and then text is actually one of the most powerful ones you can use. That comes built in with all themes. It's the most powerful, but it's also difficult to use because all it is is arbitrary text or HTML. So if you have some sort of HTML code that you want to run on your site, you put it in this widget. 
let me show you here. Uh, you don't have to do this, but as an example, I'm going to put I'm going to put the text widget in there, and then it's just a big blank canvas. And what I need is some code for anything, a, a YouTube video, a sound, or whatever. Oftentimes, with any particular um, with any particular um, video or any multimedia content, you have a way to share the content. It depends on the on the item. And you might have some sort of embed code. So many times nowadays, websites give you the code for their particular multimedia object. And then under, under this text widget, I can just drop the code in here. Let's say this is your reseller code or your affiliate code, that sort of thing. You plug in that code into this text widget, and now it becomes part of your site. Once in a while. My mom went to college. This is where my mom got her degree. My mom can appreciate did it, here. it more when it's big. So that's where you put the affiliate. Yes. Where is it? Clean? Oh, this code. Uh, you get it down here. Exactly. And the title you make whatever product it is or something. Yeah, title, uh, notice on my example here, that's what it looks like. And then if I put some text here, we can compare. I put it right there. So title is, is always what appears above that particular widget. And if you don't put anything, then it's uh, by default whatever it's already named or <coughs> nothing. And in my case, I'm taking this video code, and now it's on my site. But if you have some sort of affiliate code, you know, your, your program is telling you, use this code on your site to track your conversions or whatever, you usually use some sort of text, a text widget, and put it into this text area, not the title. And then um, save it, and now it's part of your site. So you could put a picture in there as well? Yeah. So if you go over to... Let me show you a picture. If you go over to Flickr.com, for example, let's find an interesting picture. Depending on the site, you're going to see somewhere about where's the code. I, I can't tell you where it always is for every site. But over for Flickr, often look for something called Share, the Share button or the Embed button. Here it is, Share on Flickr. There's the code right there. It tells you here's the code for HTML. It depends on it depends on the site. So I'm I'm not exactly sure. In this case, I'm gonna plug in the first one it gave me and see what it looks like. And that's the thing, I can try either one and if it doesn't work, I just change it. So there's the picture. Where did you find the code? On Flickr you have this little arrow right there. Little share arrow. And now the picture is on my site there. And if I know a little bit about code, perhaps I can change some of these values. It's just text. It's just code. Sometimes when you're doing that versus having a gallery on your homepage. It depends on what your needs are, because oftentimes a gallery will give you better results. But sometimes, in this case, this is just a proof of concept to show a picture. Uh, I'm just showing you that any text, any code can go here and it'll display just about anything. But yeah, I would mostly use a, a slideshow plugin to actually display my picture. This one's kind of smart that it automatically also gives me a slideshow feature. Depends where you're copying it from. That's all you print. 
Yes, and it goes on all your pages because they all use the same sidebar, the same sort of template. Question? Yeah, you want to more I did. Uh, I can keep them both there or it'll get a little cluttered, but yeah, I can put both. Just paste both in. I can either put both the codes in this one text widget or add another text widget. So that first one will be my picture, and this next one will be my video. So I can have as many of these widgets as I want. And I've got, a I've got the picture widget and then the video widget. How would you get a JSON in there? Oh, you said the embed from Flipper or something. Mm -hmm. What if you have one of your own? Like this really only works if your picture is online somewhere, so that you can grab its URL, its address. So this is what I'm saying about the text one, seeming very basic, but it's very powerful because any text you put in here, any code that is, will then be rendered as, as real code on your site. There's the video, there's the picture. But not in the primary real estate. <laughs> well, it could. I could do this. I could put, again, depending on your theme, I want to put this both text widgets on my content sidebar. And then now it's there. But again, depending on the theme, it's not in the main area here. If I want it in the main area, put it in a post or in a page. Here it's part of the sidebar widget, main content, and over here it's under the left sidebar, and I can even put it in the footer. So whatever my theme has, that's where I could put these elements. So, so Victor, how did you go get, I must have missed this, I think, go get the, get the actual text, not only the, the video. You, would, you put the text widget in there, mm -hmm. and then you went to, to uh, YouTube. That's right. So then under YouTube, there's a button down here that says share. And there's the code, embed. So it's copying and pasting that code as, as you need it. And every site's a little different. But usually there's some sort of share button somewhere nowadays. And you just copy that code, you paste it, and you've embedded the, the video or the picture into your site. Yes. So you see it was on the left side because it was in the primary sidebar and then all I did was I dragged it from primary sidebar into content sidebar. So it's just drag and drop. Let's say I want for some reason I want that video in the footer. So put it in the footer goes away from there, and now it's in the footer. It looks pretty awkward, <laughs> but you can put it wherever you want, depending on your theme. Some themes might have even more widget areas, but this one's got these three ones. What thing is this? Is it the 2013? The 2014. That is the 2014. The latest one, yeah. This one over here for my own blog uh, my other blog over here. That one was the um, 20, 20, 2013, 2012. I forget which one. Um, but they all they also range. This one I think it's twenty. I think it's last year's. So this one's got a sidebar but no left bar. I think. And then the footer area. Oh, this is what I wanted to show right there. So notice this is how the archive looks. There's one blog post on that date. There's two on that month, there's one on that one. There's the categories. You can see all the videos, five <coughs> posts with videos, nine about Comic-Con. So those are your categories. Do you have a copyright in the footer? Yes. And did you do that with text in the footer? That one most likely I had to edit the actual code of the theme, which um, we're going to talk more in detail about that on the advanced class because it requires editing, you know, going in and editing some HTML code. 
question. When you get media pictures or video, like the Flickr or something, if the user comes to your site, do you sometimes is there like a, a sign on or something or they, they get locked out because you borrowed that picture from someone? No, I haven't seen that. What I've seen is that if you're trying to borrow someone's picture and they remove the picture, then the picture is missing on your site. Okay. They so, code. exactly. We're pointing to, we have not copied their picture onto our site. So, in a sense, we have a little bit of copyright protection there. We never copied it, we're just displaying it. Uh, so, the problem with that is that if they remove their picture or their video, they set it private or whatever, then it's gone from our site. Well, it disappears. It doesn't show it. There is, but it depends on if you're going to favorite a picture or comment on a picture. Okay. That's usually why you would log in. To view the picture, notice I'm not logged into Flickr, but I'm showing my Flickr pictures. So it depends on the picture. You're just linking. Yes. It needs to be archived also or sent in into inactive? Yes, they can. The text can be put in there as well. So let's say I don't want to retype that code. I just put it under archive or inactive. So it's better to be inactive to save the code. And so it's gone and the code is still saved. And then if I put it back, the code is still there. So arbitrary text. In the beginning, I remember when I was using WordPress 2. Point whatever, I remember looking at it and I'm like, well, well, what good is that? It's just text. But then eventually, they, they, as they updated things, they, they put the little <coughs> explanation, arbitrary text or HTML. I thought, oh, HTML. I can then put any sort of HTML or CSS in there, and it's very powerful. And that's what we're seeing here. I'm showing this video from an external location or a picture, or just about anything that can be embedded. Where did you put the actual text? Like, well, it's in the... Yeah, did you just add it to the... You have two boxes. One is the title, which usually you don't put anything there, and the second is the actual area where you put the code. And can you put text with the code? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yes, and we'll, we'll talk about that, adding adding that, because I would like on my site something like this site over here with a bunch of social media icons. So do you do that in text? Nope, that? we're going to do it together in a moment. Oh, okay. um, I just need to remind myself the name of that plugin because there's so many plugins out there. So um, we'll do that in just a moment. But this is our overview here about this whole widget screen. It's a very powerful one. It can be daunting because there's a lot of little boxes. What do they do? And now we've seen what, what they do. So what we'll do is we'll take a, one more short break. When we come back, we'll talk about adding a couple of plugins, specifically one that gives us more widgets, like that one right there. So it's about 11.05-ish. Let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 11.15.